Welcome to the 30 Americans Get the Word Out podcast. And this is Trey. And they mom. And we are here due to the service learning project between the Jocelyn and Blackburn Alternative Program. We're here checking out the work and we're going to tell y'all all about it. And stay tuned for more. So we're back again with more thoughts about the Selected Works in 30 American. In this episode, we'll visit Glenn Lyons Works, Michael Mex, and Pope L's video installation. But first, we are going to listen to the description of Noah Davis' work painting of my dad, followed by the narrative Angel was inspired to write by Jamari. Painting for, oh, it's, a, it's called Painting for My Dad. Painting for, for my dad? <laughs> yeah. What'd you say? <laughs> What'd you say about his leg, bro? Man, his leg is stronger than this other one. All right. Why? This painting. I don't know why. Um, it looked like this dude just standing in the dark. But it kind of like somebody looking up. Like, it's like we're looking up at him instead of behind him. No, he, he, he looked like he in a cave. Yeah, he probably looking for his dad or something. In a cave? Hey. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be going to a cave looking for my dad. <laughs> you right. He probably walk weird with his leg being like that. Oh, God. I don't know what this brown stuff is, though. Aw, oh, he got a little limp with him. What you call that kind of limp? Oh, it's a name for it. It's a nightlight. We just gonna call it a camp light. That's what we gonna call it. I was gonna call it sure, a nightlight. Yeah. He got on, some, he got on hey. some blue jeans. Yeah, my man, my man, now he fresh out here. They need to stop playing. Right, that's he got Rock Lauren. Oh God, he that's got a polo on that shirt. Stop playing. He got a couple horses in the Wrangler jeans. <laughs> oh no, he need to go take them jeans back. We call them. He got, got the, the little lamp. He got the all black joints on. Yeah, he got the metallic. He got the metallic oh. vibes on. Bro, standing outside in the dark like it's not like nighttime outside. Right, like, like it's safe or something. God, like you don't gotta go to sleep at nine, boy. You know you got school in the morning. He tripping, but I don't know what this brown, what this brown stuff be. I wonder where he at. I don't know. That do look like a cave. Shorty ass walking through the cave. He tripping. Oh <laughs> he tweaking. He off the. He off the mend. <laughs> <laughs> he off the mids, man. He off the mids. The beams. Oh, uh, picture. But how does this make you feel, bro? Wondering. It may. I wonder about this picture. I don't know how this make me feel. I'm, I don't, I don't know. It's just, to me, this painting weird. Like, we're just in the middle of nowhere. At night, though. My mama would have. Oh, God, my mama would have been blowing my phone up. He probably don't got a phone. Where you at? Who you with? He probably, when you be getting here? Or if he do got a phone, he got no service. Because he in the cave. He in the cave. <laughs> he need to get out of there. Like, he right. need to get out of there. Oh, God. Well, I need to figure out what, this, what you think that brown stuff is, though. Probably some dirt or something, huh? Or walls or something. Gotta be. You look like you got a hunchback too. Oh God, Ultra Dome. <laughs> Heck yeah. He ashy. He needs some lotion. Yeah, some Jergens. Hey. Ultra healing. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. We all went through that phase before. I did. <laughs> I did this morning. <laughs> I did this morning, man. I'm still stuck on his legs though. Yeah, like his legs is shaped weird. He been working out on the other one. Yeah, he probably be in the gym. Oh God, just working out one. Like, how you do that? Like in the right leg, he just left it there. God, he just let it go. That's crazy. I'm telling you, he he got to walk weird. He got to walk like this. Right, because his leg looks strong. But, oh and then this. That look like a horse leg. That they oh, got he probably it. got one of them one legs, the little metal ones. Oh. He probably got one of them with some, with some jeans on. That's probably why I look like that. Yeah. Or a horse leg. Uh, with him being in the oh, in the dark, being in the dark. Some people like being in the. You can't be right. Some people do like being in the dark. So, but so, I, ain't, it's not, I can't do this. It, it, it's like certain darks, like the house dark. Yeah, I'll be in that. I can do that. I, I can do, do the house because I'm at home. Outside dark. Yeah, it's dark dark right there. It's, right. it's no dark. Light. And if it's a lamp go out. Oh yeah. 
He done you, for. He hit. I know you he hear. He better. Hit. He better not hope it starts storming. Hope he let the trail of skills or something. Oh, right, he's gonna be stuck if he don't know his way back. Okay, you better hope a bear don't get him. <laughs> I pray for you, bro. <laughs> I don't know his name. I don't know why. Maybe to the culture. It depends what kind of culture he is. Yeah, probably. Probably mm-hmm. somebody else probably look at this. They probably look at it different. Mm-hmm. Cause I just look at it as a. I just see it as a dude in the dark with a lamp. In a cave. Yeah. Cause we don't know what, what kind of face he's making. What if he's scared? Oh God. Or if you're looking at something. Right. We don't know what's hitting that corner. He could have been a big, massive bear. Or a mountain lion. <laughs> Yeah, tear his, tear his butt up. And you think the little white part is the stars? <gasps> Gotta be, because he is outside. Oh, yeah, he tripping. It's... Or if he looking inside the cave. He right. So that mean them eyes then. They could be. I would have turned around running. What is he still doing? <laughs> Painting for My Dad by Noah Davis, written by Angel. Do you ever think where we go when we die, like what happens? Will I really meet the man they call God, or will I burn in hell? Will I really be able to see the people that I loved and be able to feel their touch? My name is Tanya. I'm 12 years old. You may think, why is she thinking about dying and where we go? Well, let me explain. When I was four years old, my grandma told me to bring her my sister. She was one, and she told me to wake my mom up. So I walked my sister into my grandma's room and went to wake my mom. I tried, and she wasn't waking up, so I woke my sister's dad up, but he started crying, and I didn't know why. I went to my grandma and grandpa, but they started crying, and I didn't know what was going on. The paramedics came, and they took my mom. I started crying and asking everyone, where are they taking my mom? I was holding my sister, and they told me my mom was going to heaven with the angels. I always think of that when I'm sad. I'm even more sad today. My sister and I stayed with our grandma and grandpa after that, but my grandpa's been sick for a long time and has been in a hospice center for three days. Hospice is the place they put old people when they are close to dying. I don't want to lose him, and that's why I've been thinking about dying, because maybe if I took my own life, I would be with everyone I lost, my mom, brother, best friend, uncle, and if my grandpa goes, he'll be there too. I have to go to school today. I really don't want to go. I'm in class, and they call me to the counselor's office. My whole heart dropped because I already know. My tears came so quick. My sister and grandma were there crying, too. We went home, and my mind was everywhere. I went into my grandma's bathroom, locked the door, put two bottles of pills in my hand, and swallowed them. I got really sick quickly. I don't remember anything after that except everything went black, and I was the only person there. I thought God would show up and say something, but instead, my grandpa popped up and said, It's not your time yet, my girl. I just started crying and told him I wanted to stay. He said, I need to go back because my grandma and sister need me. I said, okay. He hugged me, and I woke up. I saw a bunch of nurses running around me, and my grandma was holding my hand crying. I looked at her. She let out a sigh of relief and smiled. Major gave us some inductory information about Glenn Lango's work. Michael Max followed by a bunch of us discussing the canvas with Kevin Lytle. Most people drew it, like the black part. And probably like some toddler the little kids probably colored it. But to me that means like the old like the what is it? Like my little sister and them probably like they age group, they probably not learning about Malcolm X group, none of that. When we, in, when we was in elementary, we wasn't learning about like that. So with the little kids coloring it, they just think it's a Coloring paper or something. Mm-hmm. Like, that's why they got the little dots. Look, make them like a clown or something. They probably don't even know who they are. Right, they don't know who they coloring or nothing. Right, they don't know who they doing. They don't know what it is. I mean, with the older people, they just made it black and white because they know who they is. They know what he did. Mm-hmm. 
Like they know, they know about them. Yeah, but little kids, so they that's just why really little kids just think it's a big piece of paper where somebody colored them. So that is exactly what the artist that's did. Deep. He he. So these were coloring book pages, and he gave the coloring book pages to like little kids who you know don't really know who these figures are, these important figures in Black history, and had them you know color them, and then he blew them up really large and made them into pieces of artwork. <laughs> you say Martin? <laughs> he had like a high well, His last name was just X, wasn't it? Yeah. Malcolm Lee X. And where's he from? He's from the other. Oh, he's from here. He's from born from Malcolm Little. The, the thing that I liked, the thing that I liked about this was like she had told me, like the word that well, that I would say to describe what the kids was doing was freedom of of expression. Like no matter the age group, no matter the race, no matter what kind of thoughts you have on what you want to put on there. He gave them the coloring books to add their touch, their personal touch on what they think should be on there. And I feel like everyone should just be free to have their own say or add their own little touch to everything. There should be no restrictions. And there wasn't in this. It was free to do what they wanted. And that's what I like. We did. And he kept it exactly how, like, he tried to honor exactly how the kids, you know, made the artwork and mm-hmm. and marked it. My mom was somebody, my somebody, my mama age or something. Yeah. Uh, older than that, like Judas, like took their time on it. Mm-hmm. And gave it to some little kids. Yeah. And with them not knowing who it is, they just, I mean, everywhere. I mean, we know the story behind it, but I mean, I can make my own story for real. This could be something that, like he said, like someone, my, my mother or father could have been drawing this because, you know, this person could have been very inspirational to them back in their days or even if they weren't around when he was alive, if they heard about him and they liked what he did and it left a print on them, they could just be drawing this one day and then they see another you know, son or daughter come in, most likely it'll probably be a girl. I mean, I don't know who put makeup on a male, but hey, maybe they thought it was a bald head girl. I don't know for real. But I'm thinking like maybe, maybe they, they didn't they like just, gender maybe, stereotypes. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're at, and maybe they seen what their mom and dad was doing. They young, you know, they just want to color. So like, I'm going to color them. And they had their own touch. Yeah, without them knowing. Like, it's yeah. like it's probably like a little joke to them, but yeah. they really like, ain't know they just, Yeah, they like, just ain't know who they was coloring on, you know? They ain't know what they was doing. But I mean, they obviously affected the painting positively. Every, anybody ever told you y'all were superheroes? No, they ain't no superheroes. Yeah, I don't know about that. I need so, superheroes. So, your mind is your superpower. Y'all flexing it right now. So I'm just, I like, y'all got me. <laughs> y'all got me crazy excited. Like, I, I love it. So, yeah, y'all mind, y'all flexing it. Artist Pope L said, so regarding your race, what more can you say about it? So much has been said. What else can be said? Nothing. So as we watch this installation, perhaps the artist was making a statement. The next clip is a laser, Kranisha, and Damon discussing Pope L's work. The Great White Way, 22 miles, nine years, one street. Hello, my name is Damon. I'm watching this dude crawl. How long did he say? Tw- like 20-something miles? 22 miles? It's from, I don't know why. I, that's why I'm trying to figure out why. I like it though, cause it's different. Ain't nobody did this yet. Now nah, he on, he be on. He got a skateboard on his back. I would have just crawled on my back the whole time if it was me. But I still don't know why he doing this. Is he jumped in? A, he dressed in a Spider Man suit too. Mm-hmm. That's different. Then he got on the boat to get here to where he at. Where? Where he say he crawling to? He was trying to crawl to Broadway. So he, oh, he crawled on the sidewalks of Manhattan. All them people, all them people up there. Oh, damn. He probably, he probably trying to make a message or something. He was sending a message. Probably, uh, no, nah, he 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 definitely definitely taking the hard way. He tripping too. He tweaking. He probably he probably did this not. Cause he's trying to tell them not to give up, pull through. Basically, 
But then he got on his skateboard, so I don't know if he meant to say pull through halfway and just cheat the rest. Because <laughs> he did start using it. Oh, yeah, he cheated. He got on the boat, and he used a skateboard. Oh. What do you think the people that stopped him in New York City thought? Like, what is he doing? Like, why is he doing this? They probably looking at him like, what? I ain't gonna say the rest. Like, if I would have seen him crawling somewhere, if I would have seen this, I'd be like, get your dumb self up. Because there ain't no point to do it. Like, to me, ain't no point of doing this. He goofy as hell. <laughs> goofy. Like. That's what I'm trying to figure out, because you look like a fool. It's too small for one. It's talking about racial and socioeconomical, whatever the word is. Alasia, why do you think he got on this suit? Save people's lives. He's saving himself. Saving himself from all that walking, man. He can just crawl. I mean, that's the easy. I mean, crawling the easy way to walking. I mean, if you crawl fast, if you think about it. There it says they're overcoming social economic and racial barriers. Well, he he cheating for one because look. I know the big ass. Then he about to get off and roll on his back. Cheating. So you gotta no, cheat. He, he gonna crawl off, off the mind. He, he gotta. Hey, he telling you this. What it, I know. I know what it mean now. All right, listen. No. Yeah. I don't even get on skateboards. I know why he doing this now. Looky, he doing this. All right. Mm-hmm. He dressed as Superman because you know Superman the man is still right. So he doing this because he think he the man is still right. right. But the man is still not going to cheat and take the boat and on his back and all that. So he's still cheating because, watch, she about to get on his back. Look, 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 look somebody going to walk past, watch. They probably looking at him like, what is he doing? He look, Brian, he, it took him five years because he was in pain and all the yeah, sores and all that. It took him five years for what? To, to do, do that. He had to stop for it because he had pain and stuff. What he had to stop for if he got on the boat and rode on his back? What, what pain he in? <laughs> Look, Look. Chicken. what pain, what pain, he looks like he's shocked. what pain is he in, he cheated, that's why he cheating, cause he in pain, pain, he hurt, he act like somebody told him to do this, I mean, he chose to do it, but right, it was he his still decision, hurt. he thought he was a man of steel, but he realized that he wasn't, I would've got, after all of this, he realized he can't believe it, he better get his dumb self up, he better get up, he made it to where he was trying to go, yeah, that's where he was trying to go right though, yeah, he was going to try to do that. Oh. Five years for that. Oh, no, he, that's where he went, to the Broadway King of Heroes. He wearing a Superman costume because he thought he was going to be a hero. So uh, you're telling me he got on the boat. Mm-hmm. No, he crawled to the boat, mm-hmm. got on the boat, got off the boat, rode on his back, mm-hmm. and he just supposed to be in pain. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you lucky I can't cuff. <laughs> <laughs> you lucky. Like, what? We are going to leave you with a quote from Glenn Wygon. Any depiction of a black person it was a little revolution because it meant there are history, stories, images, and heroes mattered. Thanks for listening, and we hope you come to visit the 30 Americans exhibit, which include works by Glenn Ligon, Noah Davis, and Pope L. 30 Americans is on view at Jocelyn Art Museum until Sunday, May 5th. Come back next week to hear more from us Blackburn High School students.